One thing about EV charging, of course, you uh, charge the car with electricity, it's soundless, so it's really good for the nature. But of course, you have to consider where does the electricity come from? The flying car makes its first test, a propeller-driven automobile that also flies, or if you prefer it the other way. The future of cars when I was a child. Good question. Like flying cars? <laughs> uh, I thought that we would be flying or half flying. We're going to have hover cars and robots are going to drive them and that kind of thing. <laughs> Not the Flintstones, the opposite one, like the... Deathstones. Deathstones. <laughs> Von der Herstellung bist du ja heute total, kannst ja alles machen. Vor allem auch das Design gibt unglaublich tolle Autos. In einem neuen elektrischen Auto verändern sich ja die Parameter. Du brauchst jetzt keinen Motor mehr vorne. Für Designer ist diese Zeit jetzt eine der spannendsten, weil wir mitten in einer Transformation sind. Da war der ID3 dabei, die neue Erfindung des Golfs. Da war der ID4 dabei, unser ID Bus, eine der Ikonen der Marke. Wenn Effizienz aussieht wie ein e-tron GT, dann passt's. Die Kabine ist schmal, der Körper ist unten breit, der Wagen ist flach, hat Riesenräder. Dadurch kommen diese Quattro-Muskeln über allen vier Rädern extrem zur Geltung. Beim Taycan war genau das Gleiche. Du siehst auf einmal ein UFO. Du denkst, das fährt nicht, das fliegt eigentlich. There's definitely some concerns about owning an electric car. I'm thinking about it seriously, but I haven't made up my mind yet because as a person, I'm also very stressful and I know that charging will stress me a lot. One big one, the range. I think the doubts I'd have would be to do with how easy it would be to charge them and how sort of easy it would be, or how much mileage I'd get if I was doing a larger trip. Yeah, I think also nicht, dass die Infrastruktur da ist, wie sie für Tankstellen, also normale Erdölfahrzeuge vielleicht gegeben ist. Ja, yeah, exactly. I mean, I've no idea if what the infrastructure is like in the Baltic states in Lithuania and Estonia. So, if I get stranded in in uh, Vilnius, then what, what do I do? How do I get my car home? One of the biggest problems people have with electrical cars is the range. If I want to travel, where can I charge? It's a relevant question. My name is Kaisa Songnefur. I'm a project manager at Aeon as an engineer, and I work in the field of e-mobility. I really enjoy the nature and spending time there. Both me and my husband, we are leaders in an outdoors association. So we bring kids and we give them an adventure. But we also teach them the fundamentals. Don't disturb, don't destroy. We invest in infrastructure projects. So it's a widespread and built-out system. Most of the charging will be done at home. We would install that for you. But we also have the public chargers, the offices along the highways. You will find like thousands of chargers. We want a better future, a better environment, and that's where really where AM comes in. driving along the sea and I can hear the birds and I can hear the waves crashing it is mind-bending because I feel like I'm part of that beautiful place. What we do is transform and upcycle existing classic vehicles into timeless electrics.
Well, we have our Jaguar E-Type, we have our Rolls-Royce Corniche here, we've got Mercedes and Triumph. We couldn't imagine anything more opposite to say, take this huge Rolls-Royce with this gigantic engine, replacing that with something clean, simple, sustainable. So we preserve the original artistry of the vehicle. For example, the original fuel gauge shows the state of charge of the battery. Since some years, we have been building fast chargers, and now we're also doing the ultra-fast chargers. So one of the things that people think about when they think about range anxiety is where are they going to stop along the way and how long do they need to stop when they stop. There are different types of charging technologies and they are rapidly improving. At some places you can't get the ampere that you actually would like. The grid connection needs to be really high. So Aon did a collaboration with Volkswagen to uh, make the booster. You know, it's amazing now, with this ultra-fast charging technology, we can charge this car in about the same time as it takes to watch this film. That's amazing. It's a charger where you can have a small grid connection, but then you have a battery inside the charger, so you will fill the car fast, but you still just have a low connection. The booster gives the possibility, with very little aufwand, in very short time, Ladeinfrastruktur zu installieren. Und gerade in der Hochlaufphase der E-Mobilität, wo wir noch unsicher sind, wo ist der Hotspot, wo wird viel geladen, gibt uns dieser Drive Booster die Möglichkeit, auch Orte auszuprobieren. Und so können wir eigentlich dann unser Netz und unsere Ladeinfrastrukturausbau zielgerichtet gestalten. Electric vehicles have made great progress and it's projected that 55% of all new cars sold in Europe will be EVs by 2035, with 100 million on the roads and growing. They offer promise and the challenge of keeping them charged on good energy. Together with its partners, E.ON is building a game-changing grid of charging stations. Already today, over 14,000 E.ON charging points are connecting Europe, and the number is growing day by day. In choosing an EV, each driver saves 1.4 tons of CO2, contributing to the climate as much as 50 trees do per year. What we will be looking at in the future is that EV driving is going to change the notion of individual mobility fundamentally. So when we get approached by E.ON, what we wanted to show is that today, the idea of charging requires an environment that's more beautiful. The honeycomb shapes reflects principles in nature that looks more as if it's a piece of a garden. A charging facility would express what E.ON is really doing. They provide clean energy for a completely new way of individual mobility. Ich finde natürlich am spannendsten so die Studien, die so kommen. Alles ist eigentlich offen. So wünsche ich mir das. Also ich wünsche mir, dass die Produkte nicht belanglos sind, sondern besonders. Wir werden glatter, cleaner und wenn man dann einmal wirklich ein Elektroauto auch gefahren ist, dann merkt man, dass es extreme Power hat und eben Spaß macht zu fahren. Zukunft, Utopie hat mich schon immer stark getrieben. Träumen ist erlaubt und wichtig, gerade auch als Designer. Ein Elektromotor ist so klein, dass er beliebig Platz finden kann. Das gibt uns die Chance, Dinge neu zu denken. How this has developed so rapidly, I think to be a part of that journey, it's so cool. Dass man sagt, boah, das ist ja geil, das ist ja toll, das ist ja faszinierend, aber CO2-frei. We have found that this concept and these cars are, are a perfect way to bring people together. It quickly builds community wherever we go. Like many times when we talk about environment and the right thing to do is like, oh, it doesn't matter what one individual or consumer does. But I think fighting for the environment, it's about attitude. We are people from all around the world. And everybody can do something. You can decide if there's something really close to your heart and then 
get those people that are interested in the same thing coming together and that sort of creates also the power of the, the group.